Hi, everybody, and welcome to Breeders' Cup Focus. In this edition, we're going to take a look at the top 10 contenders, early contenders, for the Breeders' Cup distaff. Let's throw up the list of one to five. Now, these are early possibles. Pre-entries will be taken next week and post positions the week after that. Idiomatic, you are five to two morning line favorite. These morning line odds produced by our colleague at DRF, Brad Free. And why not? Hideo Manic has really come into her own. She's just this big, good-looking daughter of Curlin. She overcame trouble to win the Delaware Handicap. She then looked good wiring them in the personal ensign, and here she is in the spinster. She did it again. In this race, Nest didn't really get off to a good start, but it's not like Nest fired her best shot in the stretch. Yeah, Nest didn't run at all in this race, and once that uh, became the case, Dan, there was really no way that Hideo Manic was going to lose here. Another race where she had no trouble making the early lead didn't take a lot of pressure up there and this race is really never in doubt from the quarter pole home just getting good at the right time in really good form on the way into this uh, breeders cup distaff day and the one thing to take note of uh, in that top five that we're looking at there the first four of those horses they all want to be right up close Adair Manor especially, and Adair Manor was a horse that was a really nice runner at three uh, and has sort of blossomed as she's gotten older for trainer Bob Baffert. I think one of the keys to it is that Bob has found some great spots for her out in Southern California. Here's a four-horse field where she beats the very likable Desert Dawn, but in these short field races at Santa Anita, Adair Manor is always going to have an advantage over Desert Dawn because she has tactical speed. It's a very fair way to look at her, Dan. Um, she's a horse who you know certainly been in the right spots and winning very easily so far this year the other way to really look at her though one of the ways that i am tempted to look at her is she looked like as a two-year-old like she was maybe the best of her generation yes. uh, for, for baffert they come back at three and because of this ridiculousness where baffert can't run his horses in kentucky they got to switch trainers baffert doesn't have her anymore she makes limited starts in that campaign it just doesn't look that good baffert's got her again this year he's got her right back on track all she does is win She's got competitive figures uh, and a grade one win on the way into this race. I think she's a super dangerous horse. Let's talk quickly about search results for Chad Brown. This is a horse that, for the most part throughout her career, has usually found one better in these big races. She is capable of running some fast races. She is capable of running some competitive races. And she's tactical enough where you could make the argument that she's not a true need-the-lead type. But in a big race like this against two Top-notch horses like Idiomatic and Adir Manor, you might want more than five to one or so. I would agree with that. I mean, we'll see what kind of price you can ultimately get. But I think, you know, it's pretty clear just from looking at her PPs and following, you know, her career so far. She's talented enough to win this race. Mm. And, and she doesn't need the lead to be effective. So that's another feather in her cap. I've always felt like she was maybe a little better going a little bit shorter. Maybe at a mile and an eighth is really pushing it against top, top horses. But overall, she's pretty good. Now, the first three horses on the list are older runners, and they seem to have the edge over the three-year-old crop right now. Randomized might be one of the leaders of the three-year-old crop, crop, along with Pretty Mischievous. Randomized, of course, made her breakthrough performance at Saratoga, winning the Alabama in gate-to-wire fashion. Then she found just a great situation in the Belle Dame as a lone speed in a four-horse field. Yeah, had all the best of it here. Uh, another pretty easy win for her. It makes it three in a row now with, you know, decent figures, Dan. They put her right on the cusp of being a major player in this race. The question going into this, this staff is how will she stack up against way better horses than the ones she's been beating? And what will she do when she's denied the lead? Because I'd be shocked if she made the lead in the, in the distaff. Let's talk about the five Clarier while moving over to six through 10, because I want to sort of bunch Clarier in with Nest. These are two horses that are coming off some subpar performances, but you know on their very best days, they could win a race like the Breeders' Cup Distaff. Clarier has been a little bit disappointing recently, but isn't she just going to get the right setup if all these horses show up at the BC? Yeah, she's the, the most likely horse in the field to take advantage of, of the expected pace that has to be at least solid in here, Dan. You know that when she's right, she's the best closer in the field. And, you know, listen, I actually feel like she's had a very underrated campaign this year as a five-year-old. All right, her last race was terrible in the personal ensign. The first time ever in her life that she catches a sloppy sealed track, I think you could tell first time through the stretch in that race that she, she wasn't handling it. She did not run at all. In that spot i would just throw that race out i thought everything else she did this year was rock solid and i'm expecting her to bounce back over a fast track 
So Nesta missed a lot of time leading into her 2023 campaign. She returned with a win in the Shoe V. She got beat by Idiomatic in the personal ensign, although she ran pretty well. What do you take out of her race in the Spinster? Again, it wasn't an ideal trip, but as we said, she didn't run at all. Uh, are you willing to give her a mulligan based on her overall body of work, or is that last race just so concerning that it's hard to take her, even yeah. at a solid price? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see if you can get even get a solid price on her day, because you usually can. I mean, I don't know how much she can drift in this field but we'll see i guess that eight to one would be you know pretty hard to argue with just because you know um if she can still run that she's good enough to beat these horses her last race was super disappointing though and i'm not sure that just getting off to a little bit of an awkward start there's enough of an excuse i guess the best advantage for pretty mischievous is her consistency she seems to show up every time but this would just be a big step up in class against older horses yeah, I, that's how I looked at her, too. I mean, she's a really nice horse. I think this is a tough spot for her. Wet Paint's big advantage is that she is a closer in a race packed with speed, and she's another one that seems to show up more often than not. The problem is she might not be the best closer in the field. Yeah, that's how I looked at her, too. I mean, I, I still I feel like she's even a little bit underrated as well, Dan, and I don't think she's impossible in this race if the pace gets fast. Um, but that's only – I would only look at her that way if you sort of, for some reason, felt like Claire Yair wasn't going to show up because I think Claire Yair – is a way better closer than that painting. Desert Dawn isn't the worst 30 to 1 shot I've seen in the Breeders' Cup simply because she'll likely get a completely different pace scenario than what she's been facing in her last three or four races out in Southern California. Uh, we do know she runs on in the end. I know you've always been a little bit of a fan of hers. Uh, the pace setup is good. She's kept in solid form. Whether she's good enough to beat a star-studded field like this is a different story. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add to that. I think you laid it out perfectly, Dan. She's one of those horses who she'll probably need to catch a break or two if she's going to pull off an upset in this distaff. But she's going to be a huge price, and she's a talented horse. Let's take a look at one through five again, wrapping things up. Idiomatic is our five to two morning line favorite, a dare manner in very, very good form as well. Clarier, is eight to one good enough for you, or would you need more? No, I think that's a very fair price on a horse like Claire Riera. I just I feel like there's a real chance that she bounces back on Breeders' Cup Day Dan. And if she does, she's right there with these horses. Really good field of Phillies and Mares expected to line up for the distaff led right now by the daughter of Curlin, Judmont Farms Idiomatic.